Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you all for, for joining us. Uh, on behalf of the Sydney FC Board of Directors, it gives me great pleasure this afternoon to announce that Ian Crook uh, will come on board as Sydney FC's new head coach. Um, we have recently entered into a two-year contract with Ian, um, and we are very confident that Ian is the right man to take our A-League team forward into the coming seasons. And we're confident of that for, for a number of reasons. Firstly, Ian has had a distinguished footballing career as both a player uh, and more recently as a coach. As a player, Ian played in 15 seasons of the English Premier League, um, starting off with, with Tottenham and then later moving to a distinguished career with Norwich. And as a, pl uh, I beg your pardon, and as a coach, more recently, Ian has had over a decade's experience applying his trade in Australia, England and in Japan. Another important factor for us was Ian's proven track record in being able to develop young, talented players. And he's proven that on a number of occasions over the last couple of seasons as he's headed up our youth program. Here at Sydney FC we now have a number of very talented young players that have progressed through that system. Um, have now entered into professional contracts here at Sydney FC and are ready for first team football. And we're very confident that under Ian's continued guidance that those players will continue to develop and become very important members of our squad for the coming seasons. And finally, another important factor for us was that Ian knows Sydney FC. He knows what this club is about. He's spent three seasons in total here at Sydney FC. He's experienced success at Sydney FC. And importantly, our playing squad have the utmost respect for Ian as both a man and as a coach. So for all of those reasons, and a few more reasons that I haven't mentioned, we are very confident that Ian is the right man uh, to take us forward. And on behalf of the board of Sydney FC, I'd like to congratulate you, Ian, uh, on your new appointment and wish you all the best for the coming season. Thank you. Thanks. Firstly, I'd just like to start and say that the chairman actually missed the most important thing that probably tipped the scales in my favour was my uh, four weeks at American Samoa. Um, I think that was, the, that was the deciding factor in this. Um, now, look, firstly, I'd like to thank the, the, the club, uh, the, the chairman and the board of directors for an opportunity that has probably been sat in my stomach for uh, a few years now. Um, from day one, when I came to work here, um, I just had a, a real desire and passion to make this successful here. I was fortunate to work with uh, Pierre Litbarski in year one and, and then you know things sort of developed from there and sort of gone elsewhere overseas and come back and yeah it's just something that's just sort of built up inside of me especially over the last six months to have the opportunity to come and work at, which I believe is the biggest club in the country. I know there'll be a few out there that will argue the point but for me this is the biggest. Um, and I just would love to, uh, and I'm delighted to have the opportunity to take the club back to where I believe it belongs, which is, which is right up the top there, challenging the likes of Brisbane Raw and Central Coast for, for titles uh, year in and year out. And that's, that's something that's uh, really, for me, something I'm looking forward to. Any questions from the floor? Ian, did you think that uh, maybe senior coaching job in Australia passed it, passed it away? Well, obviously, I mean, I had the, the three years at Newcastle and thoroughly enjoyed that. Um, I banged heads with Con Constantine a few times, but, but it gave me a great grounding. Um, but then, you know, sort of things worked out that I, I fell into more the, the youth development side and more with uh, as an assistant. But deep down, I, I'm a winner, and I'm sure anybody out there that has been a coach or a player, you know, that to want to produce then every week is something. So I'm, I'm glad I've got the opportunity again, but did I think it would pass me by? Yeah, maybe so. Is that a long, long enough winded answer for you there? Yeah, yeah. You got there. You got there. Ian, you've, you've enjoyed your time as in the youth league as, as the coach there. Yeah. Is this um, the next progression or is it something, a burning desire culminating today? Yeah, I think also, yeah, the, the burning desire is something that's, that's massive, you know, and a big thing I've got to say in this, I feel like I've been reinvented a little bit as a coach, uh, a bit of a cliche here, but, you know, I've got to say a big thank you there to the FFA technical department in Hamburger uh, that's, I suppose, opened my eyes to, to a different 
a different game and the way the way the game should be played, uh, and that's probably given me a desire to you know to want that to, to to want to take ahead what I've started to learn over this previous sort of 18 months of working under that sort of regime. So, yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, but deep down, it's got to be a gut feeling, and this has been something that's sort of been ticking away for a long while. What's the sort of style of play that uh, you want to bring to Sydney FC? What can the fans and people out there hope under your stewardship this team plays like? Oh, listen, we can all sit here and say, like Barcelona, I love, you know, I, I was fortunate to be brought up through a playing system uh, at both Tottenham and Norwich that was predominantly a possession based game. Um, and that's something that's lived with me ever since. Um, for me, it's got to be about high tempo. You know, I want to I want to make this a fortress here, but I also want us to be a, an attractive side to watch. I'm sure everybody else would would uh, would say that as a coach. Um, I believe we've got a group of players here that, with the additions that we look to bring in, uh, can enable us to play the kind of game that this club and that, and our supporters deserve to to watch every week. Ian, there's obviously been a few names thrown into the mix. Yep. Um, what do you say to those who didn't see this coming? Do you think you can do a better job than those that were mentioned before? Yeah, it's no problem. Yeah, no, it's. Uh, I look at the at the end of it. Um, you know, I think I was flattered to even be included in in a list of people. Um, I don't have an ego that says I need to be number one choice. I obviously realised that the club had gone a fair way down the line, should we say, with other, uh, with certainly somebody else, and that. And that's, that's fine. The, the only way I can prove to them that I'm the right person is by what goes on out, out there on the field and producing a side that, that people enjoy watching. Yeah, you mentioned that the attractive style of play you, you want to bring to Sydney FC. Does that come into sharper focus because of the advent of Western Sydney and the, the competition for the hearts and minds in Sydney? Oh, very much so. Uh, for me, you know, I think certainly Brisbane uh, have taken the game to a, to a different level. Uh, Central Coast have sort of then kicked on and, and that. For us here in Sydney, it, it's it's the biggest market. We have now competition literally just around the corner. And if we're going to want to get people to come and sit in this stadium and watch games of football, we've got to produce a style of game that will encourage them to come here. And It's easy to say, but uh, we'll certainly work really hard with uh, with both uh, Jelko Kalac and Steve Corica and myself to, to make that happen. There's a lot of stuff that goes with coaching Sydney FC in terms of engaging the marketplace, getting yep. the media, all that kind of stuff. Yep. That will take you away from coaching, ironically, which is what you love. Mm. Is yep. that something you're going to be able to do, hopefully? Yeah, look, well, I'm sure we'll butt heads at times, and but you know, look at the end of it, I, you know, I have a belief as long as I'm true uh, to myself and and I'm and I'm true with with yourselves, no, we'll be fine. There'll be, as I say, there'll be times through the year where where things will happen that I won't be happy about and and that. But, but you know, I'm big enough, ugly enough, and old enough now to be able to handle criticism, which I think causes basically a lot of problem rifts between coaches and and. Uh, and media is, is criticism. Uh, you know that's part of the game. I'm quite happy to take criticism uh, as long as you don't give it. Right? Crookie, there's been probably two years here of underperforming results. How much of this squad needs to be turned over? Or are you comfortable with the players that are uh, currently uh, with the club? Yeah, for me, it's all about what what we've got here at the moment is about improving them uh, to take us to a level that we believe as a club we should we should be at. Uh, Obviously, a big part of that is being able to bring people in as well. But I think, you know, I looked in there today. I had a quick chat with them, not too much because there's only sort of 12 of them in the room at the time. Um, and we have got some ability here. Uh, it's not the doom and gloom that, that a lot of people say. We have got some ability. Uh, and I won't mention names because for me, uh, you know, all the players have got a certain quality. Um, but we, we will certainly need to recruit and recruit well, uh, recruit well to to actually improve them, what we've already got, and to and to take us further forward. Cook, is your late appointment hurt your chances of finding decent players? No, I, I don't think so. At the end of it, my, my belief is that Sydney FC, as a name, should be enough to in, entice players to want to come here. I think, yeah, there has been players that have gone, uh, but there hasn't probably been the uh, the large range of players gone than what I thought there would. Um, there's been one or two sort of exceptional ones that have maybe gone, but I think there's still a lot out there.
on the pace of it, and a two-year deal isn't that long, but does that suit you? Oh, that's football, yeah. I think, um, you know, Roberto Mancini's in a position now where, you know, I'm sure if he starts off next year poorly, there'll be prize for his head and maybe he'll go. So, no, I have no problem with that. I, I know it's not. Uh, it's something that you have to con continually keep improving and doing well out there to, to get another year and another year and another year, you know. Scott, what's your priority? Is it results or developing the team for the long term? Um, Sydney FC is a big club and we've um, set high expectations on ourselves and others set high expectations on us and, and rightly so. So um, every year we expect to do well. Um, we've said many times that, uh, that a successful season for us is qualifying for the Asian Champions League um, and, uh, and we'll continue to set that as a benchmark for the club. Um, but at the same time, um, it's, about, it's about developing the, the very talented young players that are coming into the squad for the first time this season um, and ensuring that they, um, that they do well, whether it's this coming season um, or the two or three seasons ahead. So I'd say it's about finding the, the balance in, across the two.